Hello, and welcome to another one-off video. This week's video isn't brand specific and instead focuses on a feature that a lot of manufacturers offer but isn't properly understood by most customers. We are talking about RAID. RAID is an acronym, it stands for Redundant Array of Independent Disks, and it is a feature that is used in all areas of computer storage, but in this video we're going to focus on how RAID can be used when storing footage from IP cameras. The basic idea of RAID is that it is used to improve the performance of your storage, protect and back up your footage, or a mix of the two. So in this video we will be taking you through the different RAID levels that you can choose from. The levels we will cover are RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 4, RAID 5, RAID 6 and RAID 10. So let's start with the first level, RAID 0. RAID 0 is designed to split your recordings evenly across two or more disks. By spreading the data out across multiple disks with RAID 0, the hard drives perform much better, with the writing and reading of data happening much faster. But the main issue with RAID 0 is that it offers no protection against disk failure, and so with all of your data spread out across multiple disks, if one disk fails, all of your data on all of the disks will be lost or corrupted. Another issue with using RAID 0 to store camera footage is that even though you can use any size of hard drive, the space you can actually use will be limited to the smallest disk within your setup. For example, if you have a 2 disk setup made up of a 1TB disk and a 3TB disk, then the 3TB disk would only be able to record up to 1TB, which leaves 2TB of space unused. These two negatives of RAID 0 are why we wouldn't really suggest using it with IP cameras unless you are using disks that are all the same size and you are protecting and backing up your footage some other way. The second level is RAID 1. RAID 1 is designed for and most commonly used by systems with two disks as when you use RAID 1 it will duplicate all of the footage stored on one disk and copy it to a second disk. This means you will have two disks with exactly the same footage on both. The advantage of this is that if one disk fails all of your footage will be on the second disk. Obviously the main disadvantage of this is that you half your maximum storage capacity. For example if you had two 4TB hard drives you would have 8TB of space in total but you would only record 4TB of footage before the drives are full due to the duplication process. Also like RAID 0 your maximum capacity can only be that of your smallest disk as once that disk is full there will be no more space to record to, even if your second duplicate disk has more space it will go unused as it can't duplicate footage that doesn't exist. The third level is RAID 4. RAID 4 is designed around block level striping and systems of 3 or more hard drives. So let's quickly explain blocks and stripes. Blocks are collections of data of varying size that make up the space inside a hard drive. Stripes on the other hand are a logical sequential series of blocks that are spread out across multiple drives, shown here by different colours. So in the case of camera recording, the logical sequence is to record based on time, and so in our example here, block A1 will be the start of our recording, and as more time passes the recordings will fill stripe A and then move to stripe B and so on. Now you will have already noticed that I haven't mentioned the fourth disc in our RAID 4 example, this fourth disk is the parity disk. Parity data is a kind of compressed data used for recovering lost data, and in the case of RAID 4, the parity disk is made up of blocks of parity data that correspond to their matching stripe. So for example, if disk 0 in our example was to fail, you would lose the data from blocks A1, B1, C1 and D1. But with the parity disk in place, you can use the compressed data for the failed blocks to still access the footage while you wait to fix the broken drive. But do be aware that parity data is not a complete backup, when you install the new drive to replace the failed one, you will not be able to reinstate the files from the old drives unless you have some other backup system in place. The main negatives of RAID 4 are to do with the dedicated parity disk. One problem is if that parity disk fails then you have no backup for the other disks. And the second problem is that you can get data bottlenecks of RAID 4 when writing data to the drives as all parity data has to be recorded to the same disk. Both of these problems are solved by the next RAID level which is RAID 5. RAID 5 is structured in a similar way to RAID 4 as it requires a minimum of 3 hard drives and it includes parity protection. The major difference is that RAID 5 spreads its parity blocks out across all of the disks instead of having a single parity disk. This reduces the strain on the system and allows for any of the drives to fail. For example, if disk 2 fails then the data from A3, C2 and D2 can be accessed using the parity data from the other disks. The disadvantage of both RAID 4 and RAID 5 is that like the earlier levels the parity blocks reduce your maximum storage capacity. So in a 4 disk setup, like we have on screen, that is made up of 4 2TB hard drives, you would normally have a capacity of 8TB, but with either RAID 4 or 5 activated, the parity blocks take up the space of one whole drive, reducing your space to 6TB. The other negatives to these RAID levels, including RAID 1, is that they only support the failure of one hard drive at a time, so if you are using any of these RAID options with a large number of drives, make sure you are ready to fix or swap out any broken drives. 
it is less of a problem for smaller camera systems as you are unlikely to have more than one drive fail at the same time. The next level is RAID 6. RAID 6 is very similar in design to RAID 5 as it has the parity blocks distributed across all the discs. The main difference is that RAID 6 uses two parity blocks per stripe instead of one, as you will see in our example on screen now. Now, due to these extra blocks of parity data, your system has to have a minimum of four discs to use RAID 6. This is because the parity data now takes up twice the space it did when using RAID 5, so instead of just using one disc, it will use two discs. So what is the benefit of this increased parity data? Well, by having double the parity data, your system will be able to continue to work even after a maximum of two drives have failed rather than just the one failure that is supported by RAID 5. Due to this increased failure protection, RAID 6 is really only necessary in very large systems, and seeing as most IP surveillance systems use on average around four disks, there is no reason to use RAID 6, and even if you did want to use it, most MVRs only support RAID 5 and not RAID 6. The final level we're going to talk about is one that is often an option on MVRs. This is RAID 10. RAID 10 is the most common example of what are called nested RAID or hybrid RAID. The idea of nested RAID is to combine multiple RAID levels into one RAID setup, so for example, RAID 10 is a combination of RAID 1 and RAID 0. RAID 10 is often referred to as a stripe of mirrors, as the data is both mirrored using RAID 1 and striped using RAID 0. See our example on screen now. You can see that disk 1 and disk 3 are mirrors of disk 0 and disk 2, but the data is also striped across multiple disks with block A1 stored on the first pair and A2 on the second pair, and then back to the first pair for A3, and so on and so on. Of all the RAID levels we have talked about, RAID 10 offers the best all-round performance, with the only other level that writes and reads faster being RAID 0, but as RAID 0 offers no protection for data loss, we would always recommend RAID 10 with its disk mirroring for protecting your IP camera footage. But again, do be aware that just like most of the other RAID levels, RAID 10 will reduce your maximum storage capacity, and as RAID 10 uses mirroring to duplicate all of your footage, your storage capacity will be cut in half. This is why for most users we'd recommend not bothering with setting up RAID, as the Western Digital hard drives we sell have a very low failure rate, and we've had very few customers return to us to say a hard drive has failed. We say that in the majority of cases, unless there is a specific security need to have RAID in place, that you are actually better just using all your available hard drive space to store as much footage as you can. Thank you for watching and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed already, please do by clicking the Use IP logo. Check the description below for links to our webshop, Facebook, Twitter and Google Plus feeds. If you want more videos like this, click the playlist on screen now. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next video.